MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory, and it's a computer language that really was designed to be great at manipulating matrices, also called arrays. Arrays allow you to group similar types of data under the same name. And arrays are composed of elements. Each element has an address within the array. In this lesson, we'll focus on 1D arrays, also called vectors. These vectors are composed of either one row or one column. So A is a 1 by 4 array, one row, four columns. The fourth element of A is 0. The first element of A is negative 9. B is a 3 by 1 array. The first element of B is negative 4, and the last element of B is 7. You can access data stored in a particular element by referring to the element number. So if you want to store the value of, th of 1,000 in the fourth element of A, you could say A of 4 equals 1,000. You can also use the data stored in the different array elements to perform calculations. You can input data into an array element by element or in one command using brackets. So on the left side over here, we have four commands that will put four different values in each of the elements of A. On the right over here, we can do the same command by using brackets around all four values that will be stored in A. Both ways are equally good and will end up putting four values or four elements in the array A. If you need to input a lot of array elements and you don't have enough room on your command line, ellipses may be used to continue on the next line. So this command here on the left and this command on the right will both store four elements in A. You cannot exit, uh, access non-existent elements. So in this command over here, we try to store the value in the fifth element of A in the variable var1. But this element does not exist, and you will get an error message. However, you can create this element by a command like this, where you say the fifth element of A is equal to 6. And now A becomes a 1 by 5. When storing character strings, each character is given its own array element. So if we made a variable called BB, and we said that was equal to the character string happy, the second element in BB would be the letter A, and BB would be a 1 by 5 array. So let's make our first array. We'll call it B, and we'll store the values of 9, 7, and 6 in it. If we say whose to get more information about this array, we can see that we get the information that B is a 1 by 3 array. If we want to know what the second element of B is, we can say B of 2. When creating arrays, you can either put commas or spaces in between the array elements. So if we made a, another array called C and we want to store the same information that we stored in B, we can also use commas or we can use a combination of commas and spaces. We can access and change the data stored in different array elements with a following type of command. We'll say we want the second element of C which was 7, to now equal the third element in B. So that's the new value of C. What's the value of B? It's still the same. Let's say instead we accidentally tried to set the value of the second element of C to the fourth element of B. Well, this doesn't exist, and if you try to execute this command, it will give you the, the error index exceeds matrix dimension. B is a 1 by 3, not a 1 by 4. We can make it a 1 by 4 by 
issuing the following command. Let's say we want to put the value of negative 9. Now b is a 1 by 4. If we make a character variable called hi and we put in there three characters, b, y, e, or by, we see that hi is a 1 by 3. If we want to know what, say, the third element of hi is, we could say hi of 3, and we get e, which is the third character uh, stored in hi. We can change the third character, or the third element of hi. Let's change it to r. Now, instead of an e, we have an r in the third element of hi. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at multidimensional arrays.